everyone, Megan Swope here. Welcome to Google Forms Branching. Um, this is the final one, the final segment on Google Forms. There have been several different Google Forms sessions that have already been offered, including a basic introduction to Google Forms and a Google Forms self-grading quizzes um, session. So if you are new to Google Forms, you may want to check those out first as a branching form is definitely one of the higher level Google Form structures, but also very, very useful for really formative assessments, self grading assessments. And it is a fantastic tool for the asynchronous learning environment we're all finding ourselves in here. So for those of you who don't know me, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I have been a social studies teacher at Pensbury High School West since 1999. Please don't do some math here. Um, and this past fall, I got hired as the high school instructional technology coach. And I'm also a Google certified trainer. So these G Suite products are all near and dear to my heart. Before we even get into the weeds of Google branch and Google Forms, I just want to give you a quick tour for those of you who um, haven't been to one of these sessions before of where you can find some important resources during this session. You all obviously already access this Google spreadsheet to either watch this session live or if you're watching the recording once that is posted. For those of you who are watching live, um, please take advantage of this link here to click to ask questions as that is a, um, a feature that Pam Martino, who is helping to moderate the session with me, is gonna be monitoring. Um, you can also actually click this link, whether you're watching live or watching the recording to see the question answer that takes you to the Google Sheet response sheet from the Q&A form. So Pam will be uh, moderating questions from that form, um, helping with any responses and feeding them to me for the live session. Likewise, you can click here to access any resources, um, specifically a copy of this Google Slides presentation, which has further links in it about um, sorry, my mouse just freaked out here, um, about Google Forms. So specifically with Google Forms, there are three resources I really want to draw your attention to. Um, one is simply the Google Forms page on our, I shouldn't say simply, but the Google Forms page on our Digital Learning Tools website that has a host of resources about Google Forms for all levels. So if you are just a beginner, this is a great website to check out. Um, but there are also, there's also information as you scroll down about branching forms and ways that you can practically use Google Forms. The other two links on here are actually links from Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, it's been a long week for my poor little computer here. Um, links to resources from um, an ed camp that was run at our middle schools, I believe last year or the year before. Um, but they both utilize Google form, branch and Google Forms. One is an intervention based branch in Google Forms. So essentially showing how Google Forms and branching forms specifically can be used for formative assessment for differentiated instruction and to really help build out interventions for students. Likewise, there's a really super fun application of branching Google Forms, which is basically the idea of creating an escape room with your content. So again, those are all linked here. I'm not going to get into the weeds of these particular activities, but you can see in this escape room, there are actually some pre-made escape rooms that you could make, you can copy for yourself. Um, and use as an instructional activity, whether you're doing it in a synchronous or an asynchronous learning environment. With that being said, um, what I want to actually show you um, today is how you would go about making those resources. So they're really, um, there really is just a small handful of strategies you need to learn in Google Forms to be able to make a branching form. Once you understand how to do those, you can, the sky is then the limit of, of how many branches you can have in a Google Form. It can be very much a choose your own adventure story, if you will. Um, so we're gonna talk about those, um, we're gonna talk about those strategies and then we'll look at some creative applications for this. So. With that being said, I'm actually going to exit out of the presentation here and take you to some branching forms. And before I even show you how to create the branching form, I wanna show you what a branching form looks like when you are taking it. 
So many of you in Pensbury, if you read Brad's emails, or if you don't read Brad's emails, I'm going to make you look at this right now. Um, probably a few weeks ago before this current crisis hit, notice that we sent out a learning module about phishing, um, not the kind that you do in a river or stream, but the email variety. And this is a branch in Google form. So we told you you're going to see a series of emails. And then we started to ask you after taking you through a training module whether or not this is a phishing email. Well, I want to show you what happened. So if I click yes, this is a phishing email, and click next, it tells me I did a great job. If I go back and say no, it's not a phishing email, I get this. So this was very clearly a branching form. Now, we designed this to help guide instruction. We designed this to try to say, OK, well, if you said no, we need to show you why you were incorrect. Um, and then we're going to try another attempt. So now we're going to go to a sample number two. And it essentially did the same thing throughout this entire Google form. Likewise, um, another Google form you may have seen earlier in the year was when we surveyed you all about what do you know about G Suite? So I'm going to start to fill out this form. If I could spell my own name correctly, that would be fantastic. I'm going to pick a random building. No, I don't really teach in Oxford Valley. Um, and we asked you, OK, where are you? And I'm going to click Next. They asked me grade level. Again, I'm just clicking to make this go away here. And then we start to get into, we start to drill down into, OK, what do you know about Google Drive? Well, we, you may or may not have realized that based on what you answered to this particular question influenced where you went next. So if I said, I know a lot about Google Drive and I use it all the time, it then took me into another set of questions about Google Drive that said, OK, well, so tell me, do you really know about Google Drive? If, however, I had said, yeah, I don't know anything about Google Drive, and quite honestly, it doesn't matter what I say down here. I could have left this at a five. We then said, OK, we're just going to assume you don't know anything about Google Drive. So moving on now, let's see how what you know about Google Classroom. Um, with the purpose that if you didn't know a whole lot about Google Drive, those advanced questions, if you will, probably would have scared you to death because you wouldn't have known those because you didn't feel as though you knew the basics of Google Drive. So with that being said, I, like I said, I wanted to show you what those looked like to be able to give you um, to be able to give you a sense of what a branching form looks like. So what I'd like to do now is take you to a, a new form and show you how you can create branches within a form. And quite honestly, I'm just going to go to, I'm going to use one of the template forms here. So that way there's something filled out on it for me. I'm going to go to a basic exit ticket form. Um, so there are in Google Forms really two main, two very important functions that you need to make sure you utilize to make something a branching form. Number one is you need to understand the use of sections within a Google Form. And number two, is you need to understand that branching forms can only work with multiple choice questions to help branch it. That does not mean that you can't also answer open-ended questions, but an open-ended question cannot branch a form to a different place, okay? So if I'm looking at this basic exit ticket form, when I talk about adding sections, you notice there are no sections in this form. A section, if I'm and I'm going to kind of flirt back and forth between some different forms here, a section really kind of sections off a separate set of questions that you can determine who is going to see that section. You can make sections that everyone sees, but you just want to use the sections to help break up the form so it's not so long. You can make sections that only some people see based on their answers to a previous question. And ultimately, that's the goal of branching forms. So adding a section is really very simple. Um, at this point, hopefully, you already know how to add questions. To add a section, you're simply going to use this equal sign over here. Let me bring up my highlighter mouse here. My equal sign over here at the bottom of your um, menu bar, if you will. and it 
simply adds a section. You can name the section, you know, section two if we want. And I can then begin to add questions within section two. I'm gonna even add another question and we're gonna call this one section three. Okay, just so we so you can see what the sections are. And, and I do advise naming the sections as deliberately as you can for your particular Google form. So for instance, when we get into our sections for our phishing form, you notice that one section is, oops, you've been fished with email one. But if I scroll down, I then have a section, great job, you've correctly identified email one as a phishing attempt. Um, that was done deliberately both to make it clear for the viewer as they go through the form where, where they have landed, but it will also help me when I try to show, when I try to construct that form. So if I'm going back to my original form, let's say I'm gonna name section two correct answer, and I'm gonna name section three incorrect answer. Now these are, this is probably not language we would use with our students, but I just for the functionality of showing you um, how this would work, and I'm gonna add a question to section three. In order to branch a form, like I said, you need to have, you need to use a multiple choice question. Within each section, only one question can be responsible for branching to another section. So if I try to add three multiple choice questions in section one, all of which are trying to branch, Google Forms gonna freak out, not know where to go, okay? Um, however, this question can be anywhere within this section. I scrolled too far. Um, so it doesn't have to be the last question. It could be the first question, but it's the one that's going to ultimately branch the form. And I'm gonna make this super simple, and I know this doesn't even necessarily make sense with the question that, that's here, but I'm just trying to show you the functionality of the form. We would wanna make this question required. In order to make a question branch, you use this three little dot menu at the bottom right corner of a question, and you select the, the option to go to a section based on answer. And this is the second key skill that's important in order to make a branching form. Once you master how to make a section, and how to have a question go to a section based on answer, you will be a branching master. So now, let's say yes is our correct answer. I'm going to have section, I'm going to say, you're gonna to go to section two. No is the incorrect answer. That would go to section three. Now, I can build this out as many different ways as I want. So. If section, if if the student, for instance, is doing a branching form and they get a question right, they may just go on to the next question or example. Whereas if they get it incorrect, they may then need to go into a remediation mode before they go to the next question or example. What I also need to be cognizant of is what's happening within each after each of these next sections. So for instance, this is a little bit of mapping this out. If they're saying yes, they're gonna go to the correct answer and they're gonna complete whatever questions I have in the correct answer. However, right now, after they complete that, it says they're gonna continue to the next section. Well, the next section would bounce them to the incorrect answer. That's obviously not where I would want my student to go because they had already answered the question correctly. So I would then want to either, if I have more sections, take them to another section or have them submit the form after section two. So as you are building out your sections, you need to not only be cognizant of what's happening from the multiple choice question, but you then also need to go to each section and say, okay, well, what's happening at the end of this section? You can also have it loop back to other sections. So for instance, at the end of section three, I may then want them to go back up to section two and do whatever the people who got the answer correct had done. Or I can just say they're just gonna submit the form. Um, 
so there are with with branching questions there are a lot of different options that you can utilize to help make this a more complex branching form um, to show to show you what some of these look like in a completed form so i'm going to go to this g suite competencies form for instance some of these were just for informational purposes you know, for instance, you can see this was not a branching question because you don't see, um, you don't see the, um, you don't see options to go to a different form. I did just see a question come in about the form for attendance. Um, that's actually, that is not a branching form. You'd be better off with the attendance form. That's actually a very basic level Google form. So my advice is if you go to the, um which is the website the distance learning website and check out the completed recording session completed recorded sessions there is a google form basic session that sandy candravi ran i believe on wednesday so i would very strongly advise you to check that one out because the the attendance form is a very basic level google form um so as i'm looking at this g suite competency survey again this was just all demographic information we asked what depart actually this one was a branching form i believe it was not um so it asked what department they were in and then we went to google drive and this is where the branching really began now one of the things you might notice here is we had multiple answers branch to the same place in the sense that if we were asking people on a scale of one to five with one and two being like ah, i'm not really good at it three four and five saying like yeah i kind of know it up to like you know i'm an expert and i could teach someone else as a tech team we determined that if you said one or two we were not going to drill you down into the advanced questions because you were at a very basic level of understanding whereas if you said three four or five we wanted to say okay well do you really know, how well do you really know this information? So what you'll notice here is that based on this question, this determined where people landed from this particular question. So one or two bypassed this Google Drive advanced section. They didn't have to do it. Whereas three, four, or five did those questions and then jump down to the Google Classroom section. So if you start to think about how you can use branching forms to build out um, student interventions, if you think about our, if you think, go back to our you know, test form that we were creating here. If I'm asking, if, if I have a section a student get goes to if they got the question incorrect, let's focus here. I could add in maybe a YouTube video that's offering, you know, this was very simple math form, for instance, and the student got the math question wrong. Well, maybe I need them to watch this YouTube video um, or I need them to, I, I want to add some extra practice problems because they didn't get that first one right. I can remediate them right in this Google form before I allow them to move forward. So if this first question, for instance, is asking them to add single digit numbers and they get that one wrong, well, let's remediate that before I then ask you to add double digit numbers. Um, and this is really where the branching form can become powerful for intervention based activities likewise in looking at how this can work as a breakout room um, ultimately this the branching would be based on their ability to answer a question correctly to essentially break out if you will of that particular room um, the final the final um skill that I want to show you here, the final skill that I want to show you here is how you can reorder sections. So I showed you earlier how you can very simply drag and drop questions. And questions can actually be dragged and dropped in between sections, if you, if you will. So this one, did you feel prepared for today's lesson? That was originally up in section one. I can drag it down to section two. However, 
To move a section, you have to click on the three dots at the top of a section. And in doing so, you have several options. First of all, you can duplicate a section. So if you have multiple sections gonna, that are gonna look very similar, build it once and then duplicate the whole section. You can delete a section um, that does delete all of the questions in the section. So if I click that, it not only gets rid of this of the division here, but gets rid of all of these questions. Or if I decide, you know, I don't want to get rid of the questions. I just want to get rid of the section. That's where merge with above comes in. And that would get rid of my section delineation, but it would retain these questions. To move the section, I simply click move section. And I can now reorder these sections however I need to by simply dragging and dropping, or I can use the arrows to move one up or one down. Now, if I show you this in the sample form, it doesn't look super fancy because there are only three of them. But if I, for instance, come over to our recognizing fishing um, form and I go to move sections, you can see how many sections we really have. There's 17 of them. So I need to make sure these are in the right order. So I needed to make sure, okay, the sample email was first, the wrong answer, the right answer. Let's check, th let's check your answers for email one because this followed up from the people who got it correct. Sample two, oops, and so forth and so on. Um, so in order to in reordering these sections this is something that doesn't happen in the form itself but within this sequencing panel if you will and then any changes you make you would just simply click save and that would that would resequence the google form the one thing you always want to check after resequencing is scroll through your form and check out what is happening at the end of each section. I also always encourage you with a branching form to make sure that you are testing that form out before doing it live with students. Um, I always like to go into that preview mode and you saw me do this a little bit earlier where I started to click through and using a combination of the back button and the next button, you can make sure that your sections go where you want them to. So I'm going to change my answer to make sure I'm getting where I need to get. If it is a highly complex branching form, you may need to do that a couple of times to test out all of the different combinations. So at this point, um, I, I want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions you might have about the functionality of branching Google Forms um, before we sign off. Okay, so it looks like, you know, it looks like there are not really any questions. Um, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, mswope at pensburysd.org. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys all have a great afternoon and a great weekend if I don't see you in one of our later sessions today. Take care.